Hey, hi. Today I am with Mr. Tommy Nance. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background about where you're from and where you're at um, in your career right now? Hey, everyone. My name is Tommy Nance. I am a senior uh, student registered nurse anesthetist at um, Missouri State University. I'm currently finishing up my second year of clinicals. Just ended my rotation at Mercy Springfield. I'm headed down to Berryville, Arkansas for a couple months um, starting in January. Um, I'm from Mississippi, um, grew up uh, down there, moved to Arkansas in 2010, have been here ever since, um, married for two years now and got a dog, so just ready to finish up school. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so how would you describe your role? Like, what exactly does a CRNA do? So uh, my current role right now is I'm still a student. Um, so basically, a student registered nurse anesthetist is just a big, long name that basically means I'm a registered nurse who's gone back to grad school to seek a degree and becoming a CRNA. Um, CRNA specifically are advanced practice registered nurses um, who administer all types of anesthesia for patients needing any kind of surgical procedure. Um, we put patients to sleep for surgery and make sure that they stay unconscious during their procedure. Um, that can go in many different ways. There's many types of anesthesia. Uh, we can do what's called a nerve block, where we inject medicine around the nerves to keep your, your arm asleep or something like that if you're having just a minor procedure, but you're awake for it. Or that can even mean that we put in breathing tubes and place people on a ventilator for, for a procedure such as open heart surgery. Um, that being said, there's a wide variety of anesthesia techniques that we can use to make sure a patient is comfortable and safe during their procedure and they don't have any uh, pain. Okay. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, so what are your favorite aspects of your profession? Uh, I think ma mainly my favorite aspects of the profession is it's very autonomous. Um, being a nurse is, is something that it comes with, um, you have to be reliable and you have to be responsible. Um, and you have to know, um, you know, where to draw the line as far as your comfort and, you know, keeping your patients safe and just going back to becoming a CRNA just dives in on that and really hones in on the fact that you're an autonomous provider and you make all those decisions for a patient in the OR by yourself. Um, so you've got to, you've got to really focus on your education and be really smart with what you're doing um, in order to keep your patients safe. Thank you. Um, so what was your pathway to become a CRNA? I think that's something that is, it's not as well known of a profession. And so I just wanted to um, give our members a little bit more insight into how exactly you can become a CRNA. Yeah, sure. I, um, so actually, I didn't, I didn't know that becoming a CRNA was an option um, when I was in nursing school. Um, originally, so the first thing you have to do to become a CRNA is go to nursing school. Um, and I actually, I was planning on being a law enforcement agent uh, before I, I found nursing. My dad got sick and ended up in the hospital, and that's where I found nursing as a career. Um, so I think that's a really cool thing about nursing is there's so many branches you can go through. You, I mean, you can be a nurse working on insurance or you can be a nurse, you know, on the floor helping somebody take care of somebody or you can go to CRNA school and do anesthesia. Um, so the specific fat path that I took was I got my associate's degree at Northwest Arkansas Community College. Um, after that, I started working. Um, and I was working in the CBOR, which is open heart surgery. I was a nurse back there for a while. And that's where I found anesthesia because to be in the OR, you have to have all these different team members. You've got the surgeon, you've got the nurse, you've got the anesthetist, the CRNA, um, and you've got the scrub techs and everybody else. So that's where I found the anesthesia. Um, so after, after I found anesthesia and decided that I wanted to pursue that as a career choice, um, I started looking up the requirements for everything. We can go over that a, a little bit later. Uh, but after that, so I started my bachelor's degree at the University of Arkansas, and that was about a year program online. Um, and then I transitioned while I was working on my bachelor's. And um, while I was working on that online, I was also working in the ICU um, to prepare for enrolling in CRNA school. Oh, okay. So those were the educational pathways. So what were some of the requirements that, again, you were mentioning just then? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, so the biggest thing is you have to be a nurse. Um, whether you go to get your associate's degree like I did or you get your bachelor's degree um, right off the bat, those are two different ways of becoming an RN, right? So you have to be a registered nurse to start with. Um, I really like doing the associate's degree to start with because it gets you into the work field a lot sooner than going for your four-year degree off the bat uh, because my I did an accel accelerated uh, associate's degree, so I was an RN 15 months after I started college, essentially. Um, and if you do it that way, and being a CRNA is your end goal, you're able to get out um, three years, you know, two and a half, three years earlier than you would if you just went to a four-year university to start with. And then you can you can start working on those other requirements um, while someone else that's getting a four-year degree may already be, or they may still be in school and they're not an RN yet. 
Um, so that comes in importance when you're thinking about all the all the requirements for becoming a CRNA. Those requirements are you have to be a nurse. Um, you have to have your BLS, your ACLS, and your PAL certifications. Those are just things like CPR, um, advanced cardiac life support, and pediatric advanced life support. Um, further, you have to have a few different classes that you can get at a community college as well. Um, inorganic or organic chemistry, microbiology, and then anatomy and physiology are some of the big ones. Um, you have to have a 3.0 GPA minimum. Uh, you need your CCRN, which is your critical care registered nurse certification. You get that after working in the ICU for at least six months. Um, it's a big test you got to go take. But uh, um, And then you have to have at least a minimum of one year before you can apply. Granted, these requirements are specific to Missouri State, so they're the ones that I had to do. But that's pretty pretty much around the around the base of you know what what uh, requirements you need to enroll in a CRNA school. Okay, and that was super helpful information. That is definitely um, a fast track path, and I think that'd be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. Like I think a lot, I don't think a lot of people know about that. So thank you so much for that information. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so the next um, kind of just the last general thing really is: Do you have any tips? Um, for students who are aspiring into this path, and you did give us a very beneficial tip with your, you know, associate's degree, and all of that. But as far as just like um, education, what they can start doing in high school, and how um, they can best prepare for a profession as a CRNA. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the major things that a lot of people don't think about is getting into the hospital to start with. Um, so I I went straight into nursing school without ever really being in a hospital, without doing any kind of um, nursing assistant aid or anything like that. Um, so I think the program that you guys are in, um, the Ignite Caps, is really, really beneficial in getting you exposure to all of those different areas of the hospitals. If you want to be a medical worker, it's going to show you everything and everything that's available to you. Um, as far as, you know, my advice and, you know, if you want to get into CRNA school pretty early, um, I think, you know, going the associate's degree way is a lot uh, better than, than going to a four-year university. It's a lot cheaper, especially if you're having to pay your own way. Um, just getting your foot in the door. If, you know, if you've got your, your CNA license, um, talking to the nurses, talking to CRNAs, because you're going to interact at some point. Um, and maybe chatting with those CRNAs about giving them uh, your interest in their profession and going to chat with them in the OR. I think those are some of the, probably the, the best things you could do if, if this is something you want to do. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to add? This is kind of all I had really to ask you, but is there anything else that you think would be beneficial to know about your profession or someone aspiring to be in it? Uh, I think there's there's you know two different types of anesthesia providers you've got the crnas and you've got anesthesiologists of course there's you know pros and cons to each different um aspect but a lot of times that confuses people when there's two different roles to do the same um i guess job um so if you're if you're wanting to do anesthesia in general i think it's best that you research a lot about each profession um, about each way to get there i mean um because there, there are some similarities and differences in between going to med school and going back to grad school to be a CRNA. Um, other than that, I don't think there's, there's much of anything. If anybody has any questions or anything like that, I'd be willing to talk to them. Or even when I get out, if anybody wants to come shadow me or anything like that, we could step that up. Okay, thank you so much um, for your time. And um, it was so beneficial. Yeah, absolutely.